So you think you were right? Mm. Bring it on, bring it on, prove me wrong. Go put up a fight. Mm. The way I do, way I do will knock you down. You know there's a motion between. Hey guys, welcome back. It's week five of our holiday home challenge and this week we are tackling our home's clutter hotspots. I want you to take a look around your home and find those areas that just collect clutter over and over again, no matter how often you tidy them. Those are your clutter hotspots. The number one complaint that I get from most homeowners is that their clutter hotspot is the kitchen counter or the kitchen table. And there are three easy things that you can do so you never have to struggle with that again. The first thing that I totally recommend you having to stop the clutter on your kitchen counter is a landing zone. This is a spot as soon as you enter the home to drop your purse, your keys, your wallet, your glasses, your kids' backpacks. A landing zone can be as simple as a basket or a couple of hooks or as complicated as a mini mudroom system. I don't want you to worry so much about spending a ton of time or money, but creating any simple system in your entranceway, your landing zone is totally going to help stop that clutter in your kitchen. The next must have area is a command center. This is the spot where you put all of those important papers you have to deal with, maybe mail, your calendar, those little notes and reminders you have for yourself. Hanging these on a wall, on a bulletin board, having some magazine racks to catch your paper. This can be your family's command center, which will stop the paper from piling up on your kitchen table. Your family command center is going to look really different depending on your organizing style. Mine is simply a basket where I put papers I have to deal with, but yours could be something really visual if you're a visual organizer that's on the wall so that it's not out of sight, out of mind, and you can see it and remember all the things you have to do. And last but not least, a homeless clutter bin or bins is really important because we always have things that we're bringing into our home that we haven't had time to put away yet. Maybe it doesn't have a home, maybe we have to return something, or maybe it's other family members stuff and it just ends up in a pile or multiple piles all over the home. So having a bin for each family member or a homeless clutter bin where you put things to deal with later can stop the clutter from piling on your kitchen counter and on your table. So this week I want you to identify that one spot that's driving you crazy and tackle it. For me, I've already dealt with most of my clutter hotspots except this closet, this pantry closet it's where we keep our snacks and we're all in and out of here constantly. More me probably even than the children, but it's a mess. It's such a high traffic area. The closet doors are always open and food is always spread everywhere. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to reorganize the kitchen pantry and this pantry to create a more functional space and hopefully end this hot spot for good. So this is the pantry that we put in a couple of years ago. It's very tiny, but we had nothing before. So we cut a hole in the wall and we put in this pantry. We took a little bit of the closet space in order to make room for it. And it's okay, it's working okay for canned goods and things like that. But we love snacks. This family loves snacks. So we relocated the snacks to a different area. And now this cabinet sees no use pretty much. So it stays relatively tidy, but let me show you the problem area. So this closet started out being a cleaning closet and extra food products were put in here during COVID time when we were buying in bulk. And now it's the bane of my existence. This is where we put extra stuff that doesn't fit in the kitchen, but it's also where all of the snacks go. And it gets used often and empty packages get thrown back in and just there is no rhyme or reason to this closet. So I'm going to swap it. All of the snacks we're going to relocate to the kitchen and all of our pantry items we're going to put into this closet. It's kind of crowded here but I know you see me too. Everybody's singing oh, everybody's singing oh. Baby, 
So after a little bit of rearranging, all of the breakfast and snack items are in here because they always left the closet door open and because they were just rummaging. I feel like having it all contained to one cabinet is going to keep it a lot neater. I'm gonna show you where we moved all our pantry items now. So here in the closet, I moved some cans. Let's be honest, I moved cans from in there into here, but I'm hoping because this is stuff that the kids never touch, let's be honest, they're gonna be in here a lot less. Um, it bugs me that the doors were always left open. It bugs me that I walk you know, up the stairs and I see wrappers and everything. So my goal here is that the doors will be shut more often and it'll stay a lot neater now that the little ones are gonna be out. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you're feeling inspired to tackle one of your clutter hotspots today. It doesn't have to be a big ordeal. It really can just be rearranging something or trying a new system that can dramatically change the way that you function in your home. Tackle a clutter hotspot today. Thank you so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. Anyone else's dog roll in dead things? Just, just mine? So it doesn't matter if it's a bug or a bird or anything smelly that he finds in the yard or outside when for a walk, he rolls his face in it. So I opened the door last night to a surprise. He was covered in something very smelly. Obviously something has passed on in our backyard. Why do dogs do this? Why do they want to smell like rotting flesh? I don't know, but yeah, my dog gets a lot of baths, a lot of baths because if somebody has dog poop on the side of the road and I'm walking him and the owner hasn't picked it up, my dog rubs his face in it. Squirrel gets run over by the car or crossing, my dog rubs his face in it. Dead bug outside, my dog rubs his face in it. Why does he do this? I love my dog. But he has some weird, weird little quirky things and rubbing his face in dead carcasses is one of them. Let me know in the comments below some weird things your pets do and I'll see you guys next time.